Alien fans rejoice after the very nearly criminally bad Aliens Colonial Marines, Sega is back with a game that doesn't look like it was lobbed together in the lunch breaks during the development of Borderlands 2 DLC. Alien Isolation avoids trying to rehash James Cameron's endlessly quoted sequel and instead focuses on arguably the most harrowing tale in the whole Alien universe. <laughs> no, harrowing for different reasons. Alien Isolation is a direct sequel to the original Alien film. What that means is no pulse rifles, no snappy catchphrases and crucially just the one terrifying slathering alien. You see, this isn't a shooter, it's a first-person survival horror game. It's less Call of Duty and more like PC nerve shredders like Amnesia Dark Descent and Outlast. And I can say this having played it myself, I'm not sure us console gamers have had a horror game this intense for quite some time. It mercilessly ratchets up the tension to the point where I'm not sure I could manage to play more than 20 minutes at a time. In this section of the game, you're completely defenceless, so when the alien shows up, all you can do is hide. You can try and run, but you better be absolutely sure the xenomorph can't see or hear you. And while I can show you what it looks like when you miscalculate... No! You kind of have to be playing it for yourself, preferably in a darkened room with headphones, to get the full effect. So how does this game fit into the Alien universe and how does the story pick up after the events of the original movie? We asked lead game designer Gary Knapper to bring us up to speed. When we first set out developing this game, you know, the, the question we asked was, when the Nostromo disappeared, surely people would be looking for it, you know, who would be looking for it? And uh, it led us to this character, Amanda Ripley, and that's Ellen Ripley's daughter. So. You know, we decided out of everyone, she'd be the one who would never give up and would keep looking. Uh, that led us to this character that actually has never been explored in the franchise before. And it's like, well, that's, that's great because we're not going back and rewriting or retconning or changing the alien history. We just found this character who can, we can just explore. So we kind of got straight onto that. You know, we had our female lead. We're like, yeah, this is going to be amazing. And then we kind of got this situation where we said, okay, well, She's found the flight recorder. She's got information about the flight recorder, and she's going to go. She's going to go and search for it, and that leads her to this Sevastopol station, where unfortunately she finds an alien. And we put a, you basically both the character and the player in the situation from the film, where you're in this one location that's absolutely terrifying with one alien character, and. Oh, pretty intense. <laughs> Which is a good thing, obviously. Having one alien means the thing remains deadly and therefore scary throughout the entire game, rather than the endless waves of dumb, flimsy bugs we mowed down in Colonial Marines. But surely you can't have a game with just one enemy? Well, we do have other threats on the station that are present in the game, but the thing that's always a constant fear of the player is, you know, that shadow around that corner could be the alien. And that's a really interesting gameplay dynamic for me to work with as a designer because, you know, we can look at situations where normally you'd be thinking, how do I solve this? But what players do is they approach it and they go, how do I solve this without attracting the alien? Um, it's been, you know, it's been a really interesting journey for us to go on because when we do put the alien into people's hands and we, you know, we let them play against it, quite often the first thing people do when they see it is just back away and hide and we're like... That's, I think we've got it, that's exactly what we need, you know, we, we, we don't want the player's first instinct to be try and take this thing on and, you know, just to see the way everyone's playing this and just going, yeah, okay, if people get it, you know, that we've built such a terrifying creature that your first instinct is, I just want to get away. <laughs> What's really impressive about Alien Isolation is the lengths the team have gone to make the game authentic. People bang on about immersion in games all the time, but Creative Assembly doesn't just have to make it feel like you're in the game, they have to make it feel like you're in the movie's universe at the same time. What that means is Alien Isolation is very much a 70s vision of the future. Props from the film were painstakingly reconstructed and nothing's allowed in the game if it couldn't have been cobbled together using technology that existed when the film was made. Even the video screens have a load of analogue distortion on them which was recorded from actual VHS tapes. Oh, and uh, if you don't know what VHS is, it's how people used to watch movies before the Pirate Bay came along. Everything except the map screen is in the world, meaning the motion tracker has to be whipped out and consulted, rendering the rest of the scene, and potentially the advancing alien, out of focus. I think it's close, Ricardo. Watch yourself, Ripley. Still, you won't be completely defenceless throughout the game. There's apparently a crafting system that will allow you to create distractions for the alien to aid your escape, and potentially even traps to slow it down. 
As you can probably see, it looks incredible, with the next-gen graphics engine allowing Sevastopol Station to look properly lived in. There's clutter everywhere, giving it that creepy, mysteriously deserted vibe that so many great horror locations have. It's playing it though that really convinces you this is going to be something special. When I finally escaped the sequence and put the controller down, my hands were shaking. It was that tense. <laughs> Of course we still have questions. How will the pacing keep us interested between these more intense moments? Will the story match the quality of the setting? And will those other threats Gary mentioned be as entertaining and exciting to evade? Regardless, what's immediately clear is that this is as much a labour of love as Gearbox's game was a soulless rush job. This should do it. Oh, and here's a final thought before you leave us. It's a good job Gearbox's game was delayed for so long that this game was already well in development when Colonial Marines finally came out. Otherwise, we reckon an embarrassed 20th Century Fox would have pulled the plug and we wouldn't be seeing it at all. Funny how the world works. If you enjoyed this look at a brand new Xbox One game, please do like and subscribe for loads more on new games in 2014. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Outside Xbox.